Final part of Dance Dance Revolution Mario Mix. We're probably not going to be talking about it as well because we got more movies to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all. That's well, you know. Again, this is this. It, it's it's a DDR game. There's not there's not much to talk about. I mean, I can I can talk more about the technicalities if you'd like, but I think people would get really bored by that. <laughs> you know. Well, you know what? Do? Here's, here's what we do. Let's start with that. Explain that just so there's some merit to this part being online at all. <laughs> explain explain that, and then we'll just talk about movies over the final boss. Sure. All right. So I'll make it. No, I won't. I won't go on too long. So I don't want to bore people either. But so first off, during the now the song's reading a hair harder. If people are wondering like how the steps might go, so as far as like figuring out how when the step happens, there's actually slight color variations in the arrows, whether it's a quarter note, eighth note, sixteenth note. So you can actually see that um, if you look closely at the arrow to know when you're going to step. And then the other part of it is you can also go to the settings. There's actually probably a settings mode on this too where you can actually change it so it's even more obvious in different colors. So there's that. Um, as far as people that might be trying to play a game like this and get better at it, um, one of the things that you, that you you obviously start off with once you get like a beat down, you kind of figure out when to step. One of the first things I think you have to learn is getting yourself from not always returning to the center of the pad. Because a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll stand in the center and then they'll, you know, put your right foot forward and then you push your left foot back and then you always kind of return to the center. It gets uh, better when you actually start, like, moving around the pad and being a lot more flowing with your motions. And then you just keep kind of improving and improving and then you start learning how to, like, cross your feet over your body and, like, uh, like cross-stepping on the steps. So, like, your left foot would hit the right arrow, your right foot hits your left arrow, and, like, you can, like... Start adding tricks and spins and that kind of stuff too, and then it actually helps you get better and go on moving forward. So um, that is all I'll say for now. And then again, if you want, if you want a, a great tutorial, just just watch me play. <laughs> I never knew that. <laughs> so back to movies. Um, back to movies. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, I, I I just did the same thing TJ did. So I'm going to be spamming people with, with pointless hot takes of movies. I will just say, in, in the interest of, of being fair, um, my we we're having we're having a brief discussion um, off mic about you know uh, favorite doesn't necessarily mean best, and, and you know that that's true. It's just that what TJ is like that still all bad. Although to, to, to be to be slightly fair, my 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 favorite movie is is a movie I know full well is is really just quite trash um, um, I, if, if I had to pick any movie to watch it would probably be 1986's animated cult classic the Transformers the movie uh, <laughs> I would I would watch that movie on almost a, like I, when I was a kid I would watch that movie on literally a daily basis um, but that movie is still a thousand times better than Adventureland <laughs> fuck DJ so I mean I agree I'd say like I've I've gone back and forth on like what my like my top movie is. There's a selection of like a few that I would I always come back to, and if they're on, I'm gonna watch them. My favorite movie probably right now, and again I know I'm gonna get probably some flack for this, um, but honestly, The Last Samurai with Ken Watanabe and Tom Cruise. Um, I love that movie, and I can watch it a bunch of times. It's long. It's a little longer and has some obviously some problems, but. Um, Especially in the whitewashing department, I understand. But I didn't. I do enjoy it as a movie. I enjoy the message. I enjoy kind of like that, like hero or not like that war hero guy that kind of finds like his inner peace by going, like just doing something that's like kind of out of his character and trying to like just change stuff. And I really enjoyed uh, Ken Watanabe's performance in it as well. Um, is 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 when I, mean, I haven't seen that movie, but I've heard it's good. Is Ken Watanabe's role in that movie the same as? his role in the 2014 American Godzilla, where he's just there to stand there and essentially read fortune cookies. <laughs> no, it's a Let lot better fight. than that. Um, the arrogance of man is that this, you know, we cannot control these. There's very slow pushing on his face. He was also an in Inception. If people forget this, but he was also an in Inception, too. Um, oh, I didn't forget. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't forget. I just didn't give a shit. <laughs> Um, but as far as others, there's three movies that if they're on, I will watch them. I think is Debbie. Debbie does Dallas, Deep Throats, <laughs> and, and and Care Bears Two: The New Generation. <laughs> Jeez, no, crying. not those. <laughs> Although mine probably aren't much better. One of them is Dragonheart with Dennis Quaid and Sean Connery's the dragon. Hey. 
Uh, oh my god, I remember seeing that as a kid, they're just being bored shit. I, like, I saw it in the cinema when I'm like six, <laughs> and I'm just fucking bored shitless. Except for the one scene where the dragon talks for like five minutes. The I dragon talks throughout the movie. movie. Yeah, but, I, no, but I, I seem to remember there's a scene where like, they're like in just a big open field, and they're just having a conversation. That happens. Like that, that's the only thing. That's the only scene my my brain can remember of that and, movie. And Sean Connery as the dragon is like perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> second movie that I always watch is Cool Runnings. Um, <laughs> hey, okay, that's a great one. I I remember when 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 Caro and Clement came oh, over uh, cool to, to Toronto runnings. to visit. Cool Runnings was on, and we just watched the Again, whole thing. Again, when it's oh, on, Jesus. do you not stop and watch it? I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah, that's what we my, did. Absolutely. Like, um, like my my favorite thing about Cool Runnings is there's there's a Family Guy gag where they're driving in a car and they're, they're playing like guess the movie and like Peter goes, okay, I'm thinking of a movie. What is it? And Lois just goes, is it a good movie? And Peter just goes. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, it has its moments. As long as it just goes cool running. You know, like <laughs> and you know what? That is a completely fair characterization. I'm not going to deny it. Yeah. But I'll tell you what. Is, at the end of the movie, is, are you not getting up with them and slow clapping? <laughs> is is Cool Runnings the only official Disney released sanctioned movie that has a has a weed joke in it? Probably. Um. Fair enough. Probably not, actually, but I, I bet you they, I think there's a movie or two, they probably snuck one in, but, and then the third movie that I will always watch if it's on, The Rock, Nicolas Cage, Sean Connery. Yes! <laughs> I love Rock! So, I just, I just, I just want to interject now, fucking, I never thought I'd live to see fucking Bowser engaged in a dance <laughs> like, Bowser's breakdancing is amazing. What the fuck? You know, it's weird, I'm looking at this model, and to go back to Godzilla... Uh, 2014. His what the fuck? God, God, Godzilla in that go? movie. I know, my God. Godzilla in that movie's proportions are very like Bowser's, very like fat legs, fat body. Like, I wonder if if Warner Brothers were just like, okay, we, you know, we wanna, we, we don't wanna have a repeat of the Ron and Emmerich movie, so let's have him look like Godzilla, but but make him look like Bowser. It's like, okay. American Bowser, very fat. <laughs> yeah, just make it like like if if the he's got that hunch. If the, yeah, exactly if if the fifty four Godzilla and Bowser fucked, it, it would make the two thousand fourteen Godzilla. And the and the Jay Leno chin. <laughs> Jay Leno chin. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he went flying. So and then other movies I like Roger Rabbit that definitely would be up there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. Uh, one that you guys didn't mention. It's probably one of my favorite spoof movies though, and it's up there is Mystery Men. Have you guys ever seen Mystery mm. Men? Yeah, yeah, it's a funny you one. You know what? I've I heard it. of it recently, it. and I've, I've wanted to see it, but I, I've never actually watched it. I definitely Did recommend I, let it. Let me, uh, you know, I was I was going to spoil the best gag, but I won't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the other movies, and uh, uh, again, I won't go into everything because there's a ton of them, but uh, the other movies I think have been very underrated and underappreciated, John Wick and John Wick 2, even the sequel I thought mm. were was pretty fantastic. And again, that came out in 2017, if you can believe it as well. <laughs> that was in February. Um <laughs> But man, I I would so enjoy those. But yeah, those are kind of like my main my main go tos. <laughs> I like my cutscene where Bowser felt a need to take two steps back before falling down. <laughs> I love I love this. He wants he wants to fix his tone deafness. You know what? Sa same Bowser. I relate to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 89, 89 I, Batman. I, I, al I also 89 Batman. That's I also have a list of favorite movies. This is in no particular order, but I've got my number one is Hot Fuzz. That's good. Okay. That's good. Good movie. That, that, that's good I think that, that's a perfect movie to me. Part of the Coronado trilogy. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Sin City is one of my favorites. Okay. Enjoyable. Uh, enjoyable. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. It, it wouldn't be one of my best movies, but it's it's a fun flick. Sure. It's a very fun flick. No problem. You know, quick, uh, quick with it, so it's the fun. Quick, quick uh, side note about um, Sin City. So years ago, me and Torch, uh, we rented a couple of the movies to to watch them. Um, obviously, because why else would you rent a movie? But um, <laughs> Torch Torch picked out the first Punish the first Punisher movie with um, John Travolta, and he was like, he was like, oh, let's let's get this movie because I've seen it. It's really really violent. And I was like, okay, then I pick Sin City. Did not <laughs> did not did not say anything. So he watched Punisher, and he was just like, "Oh, wasn't that movie real bad?" I was like, "Yeah, okay. Let me show you something now." And then we watched Sin City. He's like, "Holy fucking shit!" <laughs> <laughs> it's 
so glorious. Uh, also, also I got uh, I've got uh, Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction, both fantastic. You know, films. I love I I love fiction. Um, I I I like I fiction enjoy, too. I I I enjoy <laughs> I I enjoy Reservoir Dogs, but um, I don't know. I just I, I just I I mean I. I <laughs> think that they, what the fuck? You listening to what I, I did? I did. I am listening. Oh my God, Stefan! I'm, I'm not sure. Mario. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure whether to fire you or give you money for this. But, I don't have um, any money, so the other one. <laughs> yeah, fine. But you know what? I get. I you know, to me, the best about dogs. Looking at it back now in hindsight, it feels very f- first movie because it's the script isn't isn't that strong. Um, like in terms of plot, like things just like that's kind of sloppy. I think honestly, I like I think I like Reservoir Dogs more than Pulp Fiction, just because I think the interaction I like the interactions a bit more. Okay, I mean you're wrong, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> see what else? Uh, the Dark Knight. The, the, yep. uh, that's one. Whenever I see it on TV, I'll always watch. Fuck yeah! Okay. Same Fuck yeah. with same with the Back to the Future trilogy. Yeah. Uh, Terminator Two, mm-hmm. another one. Uh, Unbreakable. That one is one of my favorites. Uh, that is very yeah, underrated. I, I, like I enjoyed it. it. Yeah, I like it. I mean, I. Getting a sequel. I still think. Already I still have think, one. It, you know, or not, not really a sequel. A real, it, a it, real sequel. It, 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 it had a movie set in the universe. I still think Six Sense is better, but Your Breakable is a damn good movie. I, I like uh, Unbreakable a bit more because of all the superhero stuff in it. I think it handles that really well. <laughs> if there's a superhero in the movie, I, it makes me like it more. Hello, I'm, <laughs> you. I'm, I'm, I'm Stefan, and I made six. <laughs> And then Apocalypse Now and Who Framed Roger Rabbit. You know, I have never seen Apocalypse Now, but I've heard it's amazing. I haven't seen it either. Yeah. Fantastic film. I think I have it on DVD, but I haven't, I haven't watched it. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if anyone if anyone listened to our House of Dead... If anyone listened to our House of the Dead OP, I have a history of, of buying things that I've... I've I, I I've been told are good and I mean to watch, but they just sit on my shelf for years. Hmm. I think we all kind of do nice. that though. I would say uh, not the Dark Knight for me, but Batman '89, Batman with Michael Keaton. That would be another one. More than something. Another good one. Yeah, that's You know one. what? I I find again th- this this is a hot take. I know most people. I I am in the minority in this. Already disagree with, Bat- with you. Just so you know. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Um, I don't I don't think. I mean, obviously, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin go without saying, but I don't think any of um, that the, that quadrilogy are that good. I I, see, I think Returns is a better movie than Eighty Nine, but I don't think either of them are really that good of a movie. Like it, it's weird how like it, we we all complained about um, Batfleck murdering people and Batman v Superman, but like Bat Batman Eighty Nine is the fucking least Batman Batman that's ever been on the big screen. It's like nothing he does really comes close to actually. In it fucking opens with him like like a, a, a family get mugged essentially, and Batman he doesn't he doesn't stop him he doesn't return the shit he just literally says hello my name's Batman please tell your friends about me and then leaves. It is like the <laughs> most fucking on Batman and again this spoiler but this is a movie almost what well, it's like over thirty years old. The twist of the Joker killing his parents I think is is dog shit. I think that is a terrible, terrible thing. Well, the reason they did it was they didn't know it was going to be a franchise. So that, like, if it was going to be a standalone movie, which as it was intended to be, I think it would have been fine. But I, I also know, I don't know if I necessarily disagree. I mean, Batman the Animated Series comes straight from that. I mean, the car, the music, the look, the feel. If it wasn't for Batman 89, you wouldn't have gotten the best cartoon series, one of the best cartoon series to ever be made. So I, True, true. I mean, true. I mean so in, in, that, in that regard, I'm, I'm glad it was made. Like you know, completely. And you know, I do, I do, I do completely understand. I can, I can, I can kind of understand why it does have have the fan base. It does. I just think um, he's not very Batman in it. He spends most of the movie fleeing from things. You know, like running away from from bad guys. He gets his ass kicked most of the time. Um, well, and he's more just kind of like a guy. He's not really a guy who's like trained in like martial arts and stuff. He's just sort of a guy who has money that kind of uses it to his advantage. And I also really liked. I think Michael Keaton is Bruce Wayne, which a lot of people used to. And when he first was cast, they hated him for it. But was like, I think it's probably one of the most accurate depictions. It's the way he kind of approaches the whole thing. He's kind of eccentric. He's out there. He doesn't really know how to like hide it very well. But he's kind of except. 
except of course in the infamous "Let's Get Nuts" scene. <laughs> You want to get nuts? Come on, get nuts! <laughs> that was a great. Scene, you know what? Though. You know what? It's like I, I'm. You know, this is slightly me parodying it from uh, the, the Fat Man on Batman commentary. I forget who says it, but one of them, one of them, I think it's, it might be Kevin Smith. Is just like, yeah. look, it's like look at Nicholson's face during that scene. Nicholson's face is just like, okay. Let's okay then. Let's just let's get okay okay Michael. Like I I know I know you want to do this shit, but let's just <laughs> let's just move this along, shall we? He's <laughs> like, you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Well, because he's supposed to be the Joker. He's supposed to be the one who's supposed to be the nuts one, and people are like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Which again, this is the guy he dresses around like a bat and runs around a city at night and just he, he murders people. Like I mean, yeah, he's crazy too. People don't think of it that way, but yeah, he should be insane. Yeah, Batman, Batman, eighty nine, flat out murders people. Like mm-hmm. that's right. <laughs> and it was even more so done in the uh, in Returns. And again, I like Returns. Actually, I don't think it's as good as eighty nine. Returns does not give a fuck they don't. about anything. Well, they there's gave Tim moment, Burton there's a moment. There's a moment in Returns where he literally puts dynamite down someone's trousers and it explodes. And he kicks him down a sewer <laughs> and he explodes. He kicks him down. I was like, what the fuck? That is literally a gag from Animaniacs. Slappy school would just take some <laughs> dynamite down your pants and boom, you know. Maybe Tim Burton was paying homage. <laughs> uh, it is. It is Warner. That's true. So, it is um, Warner Brothers. So, uh, everyone, f- thank you for joining us for our. Hold on, hold on a sec. Maybe this would be a good time to explain why Russ. Is- <laughs> <laughs> And on, Russ. on that note, I wanna I wanna thank everyone for joining us for our top ten movies open. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, there was a DDR game in there somewhere, wasn't there? Maybe maybe a Mario think, sighting. Was there a Mario sighting? I no. Think, the, wait, Mar- was Mario in this game? Was was it was just Luigi the whole time, wasn't it? This is Dance Dance Revolution Luigi. Mix. I don't think Mario was yeah. in the game at all, was he? No. Why is it called Mario Mix then? Because <laughs> it's Luigi's game. <laughs> I guess they didn't he, think it but he could, It's Luigi's game, but he couldn't get top billing. <laughs> like Batman 89. <laughs> yeah, Jack Nicholson has top billing in that movie. Well, you know, yeah, and then I think that wouldn't happen again until Batman and Robin when Arnold Schwarzenegger got top billing. Because... <laughs> <laughs> he was paid. the best thing about that movie, though, let's be honest. <laughs> I to see you... <laughs> cool body. <laughs> what killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. Oh, God. The person who wrote that went on to win an Oscar for screenwriting. I think he should have retroactively had that thing taken away from him. <laughs> That's how I thought about Eddie Redmayne after, like, the three movies he did after his Oscar. <laughs> One of those was Jupiter Ascending. <laughs> Let's let, let 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 let's not let's not <laughs> let's not and say we did exactly. So thank you for joining us, if, Russ. Thank you so much for joining us, my man. Yeah. We will put link. We will put links to your social media and uh, your YouTube channel in all of the videos. Everyone, go and and uh, watch Russ uh, do DDR. Russ, Russ would have finished this game in half the time it took Stefan to. That's how good Russ is. At <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. It is fun. And thank you for inviting me. I'll, I, hey, you guys want me around. Please, I'll, I'll do more. with This has been a lot of fun. A. A. B. C. D. E. <laughs> End. In the darkest night, I make the bad guys fall.